Welcome back everyone, it's me, Matt. I really appreciate you being here today on my video. I'd like to do a massive shout out to everyone who has been supporting my channel, both on Patreon, PayPal, fan mail, or just being a membership of the channel in general. Thank you so much for your support, it really does mean a lot to me. Today, we are talking about the ADATS, Short Range Air Defense System, something of which I've heard a lot of good stories about from my friends in the Canadian Armed Forces. Unfortunately, it's now no longer in service, but has provided a lot of strong air defense capability back in the day. Now, the ADATS uh, is one of those programs that you kind of wondered why it got cancelled. It had a lot of potential, had a lot of capability, but unfortunately, there are just better things that come out sooner or later. And ADATS was one of those programs that was just sort of, yeah, do we want to save a little bit money or spend a little bit money? And unfortunately, it was just spend a little bit more money. The ADATS is a low-level, short-range air defense system, otherwise known as SHORAD, capable of engaging both air and surface targets, which is similar to a video I just did recently on the uh, IM Shorad from the Striker platform, the Striker A1, which can do the same thing. The missile is capable of launching uh, against air targets, but also ground targets also. So it's a bit of a game changer. Again, once again, on the battlefield, uh, the IM Shorad of the Strike has the 30mm cannon. This one does not. However, that missile is deadly against armor as much as it is aircraft. Now, the initial design of this platform was to be manufactured by Urkelon and uh, based in Zurich, Switzerland, which is now part of Rheinmetall Defense, and Urkelon Aerospace in Quebec, which is obviously in Canada, which is now Rheinmetall Canada. ADATS was in service as part of the Canadian Armed Forces Low Level Air Defense System, or CFLLAADS. The first system was delivered in 1988. 36 of these systems were delivered, ending in 1994. The Royal Thai Air Force has one shelter-based system linked to the Skyguard fire control system. The ADATS missile system can be mounted on a variety of mobile platforms. You noticed at the beginning it was actually placed on a Bradley, but it can also be placed on the M113. For the Canadian CFLLADS, it is mounted on the M113 armoured vehicle. It was also available in a shelter-based version or fixed and palletized version, which can be integrated with the Urklon Contrav's Skyshield air defence system. In September 2005, the Canadian Armed Forces announced the design and development of 33 multi-mission effects vehicles, or MMEVs, to be based on the ADATs. The MMEV would combine anti-tank and anti-air defense capabilities on one platform and be able to engage ground targets such as armored vehicles and bunkers, as well as aircraft, helicopters, unmanned aerial vehicles and cruise missiles. The vehicle was to be developed by the Canadian Armed Forces with Rheinmetall Canada and Defense R&D Canada. The MMEV was to be based on the existing ADATS turrets mounted on the General Dynamics Land Systems 8x8 LAV-3 vehicle, which is obviously a very prominent and prestigious vehicle in the Canadian Armed Forces. In service with the Canadian Army since 2001, which has of course now been upgraded to the LAV-6. As well as the ADATS missile, the MMEV would be a fire and forget long range anti-armor missile and non-line of sight missile. But unfortunately, in November 2006, the Canadian Army cancelled the MMEV project. The ADATS is quite special in the fact that it has a network that it works alongside. It's not just a standalone platform. It coordinates the firepower of up to six different ADATS platforms spaced at distances up to 20 kilometers, making a huge anti-aircraft net. Any ADATS that can be in a network master controller can actually control network links between other command facilities in real time, basically superseding the other vehicle. If one vehicle is noticing targets in the airframe that it's within, then, basically, that one turns into the command vehicle. For the Canadian ADATs, being mounted on the M113 armoured vehicle, this gave a fully automatic real-time data exchange including airspace and control data, weapon control orders and fire control orders, target identification data, and individual system status and vehicle position. 
It also allowed for threat prioritization and optimized weapon allocation, engagement status, weapon status, and jamming triangulation data. There was a ton of information being passed across between these different vehicles at any one time in the battle space. The six unit network could engage up to 48 air or ground targets simultaneously within its network. The links use a frequency agile radio or landline connecting them up. I can tell you this much, I wouldn't really be running a landline of 20 kilometers somewhere, but it was feasible. Over 2000 frequencies were given at 25 kilohertz channel spacings, which were used to give them the frequency agility radio links to prevent hacking. The system architecture provided full duplex data exchange and simultaneous half duplex voice communications, allowing the systems to communicate with one another on a different network than other ADATs in the battle space. So if you had multiple networks of ADATs from either other countries, such as the United States using the ADATs, that were testing them anyway, you could actually kind of separate your communications and your network data from there so they didn't get interfered because when you're sending data across different uh, networks like that, it could get a little confusing when you're launching missiles into the sky. All of a sudden you've got a missile that could be locking up one of your own jets. The ADATS missile itself can engage all types of low level threats, including attack helicopters exposed at standoff ranges at extremely low altitudes. The system has a 10 kilometer range against air and ground targets. The missile has a laser beam riding guidance system and laser guidance grid, which is digitally encoded for precision and immunity to countermeasures. It is equipped with smokeless boost coast propulsion, similar to that of Javelin. The missile has a speed of over Mach 3 and a maneuverability of 60G, allowing it to engage targets at tight angles if they're trying to outmaneuver it, and at high speeds. The missile has a laser fuse, which is variable fuse delay, which is automatically set at missile launch. The combined fragmentation and shape charge warhead weighs about 12 kilograms and has demonstrated penetration over 900 millimeters of rolled homogenous armor. A total of eight of these missiles can be carried. Of course, a 12 kilogram warhead going against anything in the sky, you know it's pretty much gonna get knocked out. The ADATS has an electrical optical system for targeting, tracking, and missile guidance and are supplied by Lockheed Martin Systems and Fire Control. And they are based on the advanced performance version of the Apache helicopter TADS or PNVS. Of course, no anti-aircraft system would be complete without a forward-looking infrared or FLIR based on the US common module and operating 8 to 12 micron bands, providing full operational capability in adverse weather conditions. It was safe to say that the ADAS was extremely accurate for its day, and it's renowned actually for its accuracy as an anti-aircraft weapons platform. Some of the systems that allowed it to do so was a near-infrared Viticon television for day use and a carbon dioxide laser for missile guidance and a neodymium LAG laser rangefinder for operating at 1.06 microns. The ADAT's Pulse Doppler X-Band dual beam radar was used for target acquisition and identification and allowed the ADATs to operate autonomously. Basically, as long as you ranged into where the target was, it would work on its own. The radar is a frequency agile and fully coherent system. The ADATS radar could also assign targets to other ADATS in its command. This would allow the communications network to work with the other radars in silent mode, preventing aircraft that are actually trying to jam its own radars to be seen. The capability of the radar to operate in track while scan mode and the 20 target computer aided threat evaluation in netted configuration assisted the operator in the weapon allocation to the highest priority threats in the area. The system also has a search on the move and sector search programming, allowing it to drive along and search as it goes with the radar just spinning. The range of the missile to the air can be up to 25 kilometers to an altitude of 8,600 meters with modified missiles. Initial target detection to missile launch takes less than five seconds, which was very, very impressive for a self-propelled anti-aircraft platform. The engagement sequence begins with the target detection and turret slew using radar, FLIR and television systems against air targets and the FLIR and television against ground targets. The tracker search and target acquisition sequence is carried out using the FLIR and television sighting system. Missile launch and guidance uses FLIR and television target tracking and a carbon dioxide laser beam riding the missile guidance. The time required to launch a second missile following completion of the first engagement is less than two seconds, up to eight missiles, which is very impressive, which gives you, you know, if you had a fleet of aircraft flying above you, you'd be able to engage eight of them within quite a quick time span, which, uh, considering the size of the missile and the amount of smoke and pop that it's producing in front of it, it's uh, obviously interfering with some of the optics and, and guidance with those kind of systems. It was able to supersede that, you know, with the pop launch style um, missile. 
popping out the tube, giving it some clear distance, and then popping off the main motor allowed the uh, system to track and, and see targets a lot easier than having to wait for the missiles in the traditional sense of being launched from a rail with the motor and the burner, you know, creating that smoke screen in front of some of the optics that can throw it off a little bit. Even the heat itself can cause some major issues. But the optical sights for this system were very, very advanced for its time, and that's why it's very interesting when you see the ADATs being superseded by some other programs out there. The optics and the missile were solid. They were very good for their time. But politics and money were involved, and unfortunately, the platform didn't see the light of day that it deserved to. You know, we saw other platforms out there that have kind of taken over the role. But ADATS was a very good anti-aircraft platform, and if you can agree with me, some of you I'm sure watching this video would say it would still be quite good today. It would still be able to do what it needs to do. You've got to look at Rapier. Okay, Rapier, I've done a video on it in the past, the British anti-aircraft missile. Same kind of system. We're still using Rapier missiles in the British Army. Uh, and unfortunately, the Rapier tracked Rapier was removed, but a similar platform. It's the exact same thing. The missiles have been modified. The radars have been updated a little bit. But the overall concept of the system is the same. I, you know, got really upset when I first came to Canada and realized that ADATS was disbanded and no longer necessary. But I always think anti-aircraft platforms are a necessity in any armored force or any military force of that kind. And ADATs seem to just be sort of, I don't know, <laughs> the anti-aircraft platform left of the wolves. And even though it was very, very good at what it could do, it was just not enough. Uh, and the fact that it could knock out armor as well was just incredible. You know, a dual purpose system, really, really important. But it came into a time, you know, during especially in the Afghanistan war, it just wasn't necessary and just cost a lot more money. Anyway, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you learned something about the ADATS weapons platform. If you did enjoy today's video, please leave me a like as usual. Leave me some comments as well. Another massive shout out to those who have been supporting me on Patreon and sending donations and contributions financially to my PayPal. It really does mean a lot. And for those of you who have become members, again, I really do appreciate you. I will be getting around to working on the perks that you're supposed to be getting on the channel. Uh, it's been a struggle for me to try and keep up with that kind of stuff. I'm really not good at it. I need to get someone to manage my, my channel on that front. But I really do appreciate you being members of the channel. Uh, if you want to be notified of any upcoming content in the future, please click the little bell by the subscribe button so you can be notified next time. And feel free to check out the description box below for all the other bits and pieces of social media and things that you can check out there, including my fan mailbox. Hope you have a wonderful day, everyone. All the best. Bye-bye. Bye.